wife of slain borehole operator, gives birth in Oshogbo. Katsina residents show pays for interchange project as businesses suffer. And in sports, PSG Madrid face each other in Champions League knockout stage. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Now the news in detail. 14 people have escaped after being kept for days in a camp by bandits affiliated to Kingpin Bello Turiji in Sokoto State. Chairman of Isa Local Government Area Abubakar Yusuf confirmed the incident. Reports say the abductees escaped from the camp in Surubudu on Saturday when their captors went out for other operations and have been taken to General Hospital in Isa for medical checkup before being sent home. Yusuf said eight of the SKPs are from Sabonburni local government area, while three are from Isa local government area, both in Sokoto State, while the remaining three from Kwawara Namoda local government area of Zamfara State. Gunmen have invaded Pinao Market in Pinao community of Wasi local government area of Plateau State, killing seven and injuring many villagers. Daily Trust reports that the armed men struck while the market was bubbling with activities on Sunday evening and Daily Trust had on December 8 reported how residents of some villages complained over the influx of bandits in some of the villages of Wase local government area. The residents also allege that there were informants within communities working with the bandits. Spokesman of the State Police Command, ASP Ubai Gabriel, did not respond to calls and text messages when our correspondent tried to reach him over the development. Wife of a barhole drilling operator, Kabir Babe, who was allegedly shot dead by a policeman in Oshogbo, Oshun State, is delivered of a baby boy. Oshun State Governor Adiboye Ga Uyetola, in his reaction through his Chief Press Secretary, Alhaji Ismail Omipidon, directed the Commissioner of Police of the State, CP Wale Olokode, to ensure that the policeman that killed Babe faces the full wrath of the law. In a chat with Daily Trust, Olokode said the policeman is arrested and detained. The CP said the matter is investigated and that the policeman that killed Babay is found guilty will be prosecuted accordingly. To one of the officers that um, was involved in gruesome murder of a truck driver sometime last week. The officer concerned is right now in detention. He has been investigated by the state CID, just like the way we normally investigate anybody that has committed an offense. He has been investigated. And the outcome is that he is found guilty. It is then we we'll proceed to try him. So it is the trial that will determine whether to be dismissed, to be reduced, or any form of punishment. So after he is dismissed, then you cannot charge him to court as a civilian, not as police any longer. Chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria in Kaduna State, Reverend Joseph Hayab, says rivalry among security agencies and non-involvement of traditional rulers are some factors militating against efforts towards ending insecurity in the North in particular and Nigeria in general. Reverend John Joseph Hayap speaks exclusively to Trust TV in Kaduna in ways of ending persistent insecurity in the country. The CAN chairman further called on Christians to intensify prayers, especially during Christmas, for peace to reign in Nigeria. We feel that our government needs to sit up. We've had a lot of so much controversy about security in Nigeria. Can we, for once, sit up and do what is right? Enough of bitter competition among security agencies. Can they work as a team? Because if the intelligence, intelligence guardians of our security is working with the enforcement team, the chances is that such evil will not happen. But you see, because there is no good synergy, people could plan evil, and the intelligence guardian 
part of our security may not pass the information to the police or pass it to the soldiers or pass it to any other agency that can intercept them. And that's why they can execute their program. So we want security agencies in Nigeria to work as a team. We have deliberately bastardized the traditional institution. We've made them weak. We've made them timid because they can't speak. They are afraid. Let them not say something that will offend governor because governor will come after them harshly. See, if you want to get the best of people, relate with them, be friend with them, love them. When you love them, they will tell you the things ordinary they're supposed not to say. But when they are afraid, they will speak to you nicely to please you and keep the truth to their chest. Today, what is happening in our environment is that people are keeping the truth to their chest and speaking nicely to please the power that be. And that's why we cannot really get to the root of the matter. When they were to announce the restore of network, instead of apologizing to citizens and say, sorry, we took a measure, but we realized we've checked it, not working, we have to do another thing, we are restoring. They say that the army said they've done what they're supposed to do. Even at that time, our people were still in bush. I can say to you that within that period, just before the shutdown, we had 11 members of the students of Better Baptist High School with the bandits. The bandits themselves told us that because they will be shut down of network, they will go somewhere with them. Once the they will be, they'll be talking to us from that place. They eventually released six, one escaped, and four were with them. It was just recent that they released one, and three are still with them. So what measures have those things done? So it's just some primitive idea. Instead of using technology, because I know that the security agencies in Nigeria have equipment that they can sit down in their office and listen to every conversation that the bandits, as long as they have the number of the bandits, program in that system, it will tell them the conversation and the area the bandit is talking. They never use this to track this bandit. So, uh, and they shut down. So that means they won't even do another thing. Property worth millions of Naira have been destroyed in a fire incident at 18 Otigba Street, Computer Village, Ikeja, Lagos. The fire outbreak, which began in the early hours of Monday, engulfed a shopping complex destroying goods and valuables. Confirming the incident, the spokesperson, Lagos State Police Command, CSP Adekunle Adishabutu, said policemen were drafted to the scene to protect the firefighters and others. Report says the prompt arrival of operatives of the fire service prevented the inferno from consuming other buildings. Meanwhile, no life is lost in the incident. However, valuable property, which estimates, which estimates are not yet known, were destroyed. A liquefied petroleum gas tanker exploded at a filling station on Onicha Enugu Expressway, Anambra State, on Sunday night, setting vehicles and buildings on fire. Director, Anambra State Fire Service, Martin Agbili, who confirmed the incident, said the fire spread to two other filling stations and a mechanic workshop with vehicles in the area. The State Sector Command, Federal Road Safety Corps, Adeoye Irelewi, also confirmed the incident, imploring the public to be calm and patient. Meanwhile, no casualties were recorded and the total damages are yet to be ascertained. Sector Commander, Federal Road Safety Corps in Bochi State, Yusuf Abdullahi, says at least 16 people died in road crashes that occurred in the state on Sunday. Abdullahi confirmed the incident in an interview with the news agency of Nigeria on Monday in Bochi. According to him, the accident, which involved an articulated truck and one other commercial Toyota Hummer bus, happened in Bumbal village on Kano Jama'are Road. The sector commander, who attributed the accident to speed violation, said the 16 people involved in the crash comprised of 10 males and 6 females and all the people on board lost their lives to the crash. While their corpses are deposited in the morgue of Kiawa General Hospital on Kano Jama'are Road for identification. The Katsina City Interchange Road project is progressing steadily. Though the project has halted business activities around the project site, the affected shop owners are hopeful that the project will be completed within the stipulated period. Abdullahi Yamadi has details. This is Katsina City Interchange Road Project, which links Kofarakaura with Kofarakaya, all in Katsina Metropolis. Over 5 billion naira was earmarked for this interchange road project. And already, according to Governor Amin de Masari of Katsina State, over 70% have been paid to the contracting firm for the 
construction of these roads and uh, the duration for the project is 12 months. Of course, this road is going to ease transportation difficulties to commuters here in Kasana Metropolis. And I spoke with some of the shop owners around because this place was a beehive of activities before the commencement of the road project. And uh, they expressed the, some of the difficulties they're experiencing as a result of this construction work. The customers are not coming. So the road affected our business, but we know that when they finish the road, our business will continue again. Even if they must construct these roads, at least like the, those of us who have shops and business around this area, they, they need to have considered us too. Because just care on just block all the roads all at the same time. Just block the market for, for us. We don't have this. We don't have any form of business now. This work, Kaskia, we are suffering from it because a lot of customers can come, cannot come to this area. You can open your shop since in the morning up to the night. You have no any customer that come because of there is no road. According to the shop owners, they are experiencing some little difficulties here and there because the road project has affected some of their businesses. But they believe it is going to be something that is temporary and of course uh, in the next couple of months they are going to uh, continue with their normal businesses from Kazana Abdullah Ismail Amadi reporting for Trust Television News. You're still watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. So Frightening cost of business. cement in Gombe State. Stay with us. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update. A look at some of our top stories. 14 people have escaped after being kept for days in a camp by bandits affiliated to Kingpin Bello Turji in Sokoto State. Plus, property worth millions of Naira have been destroyed in a fire incident at 18 Utigba Street, Computer Village, Ikeja, Lagos. Moving on to more news, in Gombe State, price of cement is increasing across Nigerian markets. And in Gombe State, a bag of cement weighing 50 kilograms, which was previously sold at 3,500 naira, now sells between 4,500 naira and 5,000 naira. Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail speaks to some Nigerians whose businesses were affected due to the hike in cement price. This industry is producing thousands of cement blocks to satisfy the needs of its customers in Gombe Metropolis and beyond. But the recent increase in the price of the commodity has posed a great challenge to its operations. So it has affected my business because of when the price is high, so the demand sometimes will become low because of the highs of the commodity, the highs of the price. So it has hurt my business. So before we had a market, but now when the cement price has been increased, affect our production, affect our, our blocks. 
market. The construction industry offers a lot of opportunities for people such as artisans, carpenters, among others. A cross section of those working in the building industry share experience of how the latest hike in price of cement affect their work. a stakeholder in cement market in Gombe said some major producers of the commodity have announced a break. So the reason why uh, our neighbors Ashaka Cement last one month have told us they should go to maintain us for at least two months. So the reason why they, are, they don't have full capacity for production. Nigerians are now expressing displeasure because of the increase in price of cement. <laughs> From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail for Trust TV. Chairman, Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 and Secretary to the Federal Government, Boss Mustafa, has cautioned Nigerians against letting down their guards as Omicron variant of COVID-19 is even deadlier. He warned that Nigerians should not drop their guard as the COVID-19 pandemic is not yet over with the discovery of more deadly Omicron variants. Boss Mustafa made the call in Yola at the Christmas Carol Service of Songs organized by Adama State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, which held at the Ribadu Square in Yola. The report. Christians in Adama gathered again to celebrate this year's Christmas Carol. Last year, similar exercise was put on hold because of the novel coronavirus pandemic. This year's carol for year 2021 is put together by the Christian Association of Nigeria, Adamoa State Chapter, under the leadership of Most Reverend Dr. Stephen Dami Mamza. It is taking place at the Mahmoud Ribadu Square, Yola, but the event is holding under an atmosphere already enveloped by fear over the discovery of the deadly Omicron virus. The SGF boss Mustafa is using this year's event to caution Nigerians against letting down their guards. He warned the world is in the midst of a variant of concern which spreads and transmits very quickly. Let me remind us that the COVID-19 pandemic is not over. As of today, 262 million people across the globe have been infected. Almost 6 million have lost their lives. On the continent of Africa, about 8 million and over two, three 300,000 have lost their lives. In the country of South Africa alone, over 90,000 people have died. In Nigeria, thank God, it's not because of our knowledge of medical sciences, but I attribute it to the benevolence of God, to the masses of God that is being able to sustain us. We have just about 215,000 infections. 
with less than 3,000 deaths in a population of over 200 million persons. But we should not take that for granted. We are in the midst of a variant of concern now, the Omicron variant. It spreads and transmits very quickly. If you look at the figures that are coming out of Lagos and Abuja in the last couple of days, Lagos recorded over 500 in one day. And it's graduating, it's spreading. So I want to employ us not to downgrade the use of the face mask, not to downgrade keeping social distancing and sanitizing our hands or washing of hands. See, yeah, by this time, we couldn't have had the Christmas carol because of the COVID and also the fear that was actually instilled into us because we didn't understand fully the kind of COVID that we were going to pass through. Again, even this year, the new variant, the Omicron variant, uh, we are still here to understand what it is like. And again, but that does not mean that we should not be cautious. We still want to uh, remind our people that COVID is real and the new variant is with us. And so all the necessary precautionary measures that need to be taken should be taken. It's experiencing it at a higher rate, but ours has been minimal because of the mercies of God. So we thank God for the opportunity to meet together and to fellowship. And in business, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries says Nigeria's oil output dropped year on year by 13% to 1.346 million barrels per day in October 2021 from 1.540 million barrels per day in 2017. The data obtained from monthly oil market reports of the organization, though did not include condensate, which Nigeria's daily output stands between 300,000 and 400,000 billion per day. The report showed that the 1.429 million barrel per day highest output is produced in March 2021 compared to 1.269 million barrels per day produced in the corresponding period of 2017. However, the report attributed the general lull in the global oil and gas industry to the prolonged coronavirus pandemic. On the foreign scene, Abu Dhabi Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan hosted Israel's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett in the first ever public meeting between the United Arab Emirates, de facto ruler, and an Israeli leader. Bennett met Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on Monday at his private palace. According to Bennett's spokesperson, his visit reflects a new reality for the region. Bennett's visit comes just over a year after the wealthy Gulf state forged diplomatic ties with Israel under a series of U.S. brokered deals known as the Abraham Accords. Israeli Prime Minister praised the peace Israeli Prime Minister praised the peace agreement for establishing a new deep and solid structure for diplomatic, economic and cultural relations in the region. And finally, in sports, 2021 and 2022 UEFA Champions League round of 16 draws repeated the draw for the second time in Switzerland. From the new draw results, Paris Saint-Germain will play Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions League last 16. A technical problem caused an error in the initial draw, which UEFA says has been declared a void. Now holders Chelsea face League One champions Lille, while Premier League champions Manchester City come up against Portugal's Sporting Lisbon. Six-time winners Liverpool will face three-time winners Inter Milan. Benefica will lock horns with Ajax. Atletico Madrid will host Manchester United. Austrian side Salzburg will slug it out against the Bayern, while the yellow submarines Villarreal face Juventus in the, ro in the round of 16. Meanwhile, in the Europa League knockout round playoff, perennial winners Sevilla will host a Dynamo Zagreb of Croatia. Borussia Dortmund is to face Rangers. FC Porto hosts Lazio, while Sharif Tiraspol face Braga of Portugal. And that ends Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.